And because we know the world is a stage, today I'm going to begin this video with this brick that I found. I was out looking for ancient sites in the desert and I stumbled upon this brick lodged into the mud and clay and it was after going on a hike and coming back empty-handed only to find this sitting at my feet the Tartarian brick and I'll get to this at the end of the video but for now I wanted to show you some random odds and ends that have not made their way into videos and may be of some interest so I hope you enjoy and welcome and my computer's acting up and I just lost a 30 minute screen recording so I thought we'd do a little test and these are pictures I have saved either through screenshots or other memes. This was taken from Lee's channel, good old Flat Earth British sub. And he always shares some of the most mind-blowing pictures that can be found anywhere. And really, I would love to talk to the architects of this particular building. And surely these have a function and are not just ornamentation. I hear the parliament building in Budapest, the Hungarian parliament, and a massive door. We love our massive doors. Probably one of the best clues as to what type of people may have inhabited this realm before us. And here a look at the unearthing of the pre-existing railway. It doesn't matter where this picture is, this is the case in all parts of our realm. The story of the inherited railways make absolutely no sense until we look at a picture like this. And now we can conceive of building railways in the early 1800s. And I thought this was an excellent mud flood picture. While most of us walk around Going about our business, we are often clueless that the remains of a civilization lie right below our feet, usually blowing the historical mainstream timeline to pieces. Excellent picture, and perhaps this is why your foundation is settling. And here a look at possibly removing some antiquitech, stripping it down, and giving us a little look at the inner workings. This picture I showed recently in a video really reminding me of things we would see in the southwest desert minus this beautiful top portion. Perhaps this was the top of a building that melted and this may have been made of some type of superior metal that survived this cataclysm and now resembles stone. And here a little picture that was shared by a channel called Wooden Nickels. I've shared his work before, excellent channel. And this was just off to the side of this high school. This repurposed, redesignated brick high school. And all around the perimeter, we see what looks like entrances to the rest of the structure. No explanation given. And I would like to take a sledgehammer to this entryway, if I could. Moving on, some more coinage shared by Martin. And a beautiful building in what must surely be India. And the tobacco mosque that we looked at in a past video in Germany. And unless this was the top of a building, this is a very large bowl. And this statue, I showed at the beginning of the last video, really laying in a natural pose, almost seeming as if she had been real and turned to stone. Very interesting. And again, if she wasn't laying so naturally in this pile of rubble, I might not think this. So what about lesser known archaeological sites. Surely every one of us in every part of this realm have anomalous 
unexplored and in many cases undiscovered ruins. Here I found this interesting article. This guy had noticed a pyramid while traveling on a train at a rather high speed. One day he got a picture of it. He was on the Amtrak just south of Fredericksburg heading on a trip down to Richmond, Virginia and in a field on the east side of the tracks there is a remarkable stone pyramid. After glimpsing a couple of times on the way back I held my camera by the window and waited for it to appear and I got the shot and here it is. Pretty remarkable and are we just seeing the very top? Uncertain. Comprised of smaller stones than we would see in the Egyptian pyramids, for example, but very sharp lines, very well engineered. And here the narrative, more given, is it was a monument erected in 1897 to commemorate General Meade's breakthrough of southern lines at the Battle of Fredericksburg. It's 23 feet tall, built of granite stones, and truly a mystery. Told it was a monument, yet it's in the middle of nowhere. Very similar to the pyramid again that we saw in Wyoming recently. Not the kind of place he would build a monument completely out of the way. No access or knowledge of its existence. So what's the point? Recently I saw this pyramid featured in a Conspiracy RS video, and here it is. Absolutely fascinating, just to get a little idea of this pyramid in a cemetery. A monument. And this baby is massive. Here we can get a little look compared to the people. And it's said to be exactly 90 feet tall. 90 feet the one in Wyoming we recently viewed was 60 feet and this baby is quite impressive with these irregular stones to achieve this perfect pyramid is very impressive and here we can see this massive capstone again at 90 feet very impressive monuments in a very early time period and clearly these cemeteries are something repurposed. Unclear what's going on when we see a lot of these mausoleums and monuments at these cemeteries. Oftentimes they seem like the types of things we'd see on the tops of buildings. Buildings of the old world. And is this just somewhere that they stored a lot of the ornamentation instead of destroying it, repurposing it as monuments for the dead. That one was the James Monroe grave and here we can see George Pickett's grave. Very interesting slivers of ornamentation that would otherwise be found on buildings. And here again, just the massive size of these stones, a strange story. We're told it was designed in 1869 by a Charles H. Dimock. No talk of construction or who was in charge of building this. It was a project supported by the Hollywood Ladies Memorial Association. A group of southern women dedicated to honoring and caring for the burial sites of fallen Confederate soldiers. A very ambitious group of ladies, not afraid to break tradition, giving us this 90 feet of glory. And they did a fine job, it seems, of building this pyramid until it got to the capstone and a great source of legend surrounding this capstone in Richmond, Virginia. It seems that almost complete, at least 95% done, no one could determine how to place the capstone atop the lofty 90-foot pyramid until 
Thomas Stanley, a criminal working on the pyramid, proposed and executed the solution. In retelling the story, locals say the prisoner was freed due to his contribution to the pyramid's construction. Absolutely ridiculous. Giving credit to the completion of this pyramid to a criminal. And really, this is what we see with all of the historical narrative. It is the victors who write history and the inheritors that take all the credit. And here the credit to completing this pyramid is given to a criminal. The truth in plain sight. No sufficient story given to how a pyramid is constructed. And very similar to the last video where we examined capital buildings and the beautiful domes that sit atop the majority of them. How did they construct these amazing domes? Some of them built of concrete, some of copper, bronze, and even gold. And as if the construction of the entire building isn't ridiculous enough, just the simple ornamentations and questioning the means in which they were constructed are baffling enough. What I wouldn't do to possess the ability to build just a dome, any of these domes found on these buildings, found all over the world. If I could simply build a dome of this nature, I would make it my home. And what a beautiful home it would be. Just the ornamental feature on these buildings built, in many cases, in the early to late 1800s, would be the greatest residence I could conceive of. And I wonder if anybody in this world possesses the ability to replicate these structures. And before we get too deep, I want you to consider three things, or three dates. The invention of the camera, the invention of electricity, and the invention of the automobile. The camera dating way back, but beginning to get a decent image and speed around the 1870s. And by 1885, we have the brand we know as Kodak. Also in the late 1800s, we have the beginning of power transmission, originally just used for lights. And again, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the automobile. Henry Ford creating the Model T, the first vehicle mass-produced for the people. Cameras, electricity, and automobiles, all arriving on the scene within these golden years. Not for long, though. Oh, I'm so happy that that screen recording took, that I'm just going to finish off with these pictures. This one is just mind-blowing. I can't tell if it's an actual photo or a drawing, but absolutely mind-blowing. Not sure what the story is with this. And here we can see tiny little people going up the steps and all along here. Just fascinating. And I don't know what to say. Oh, and here I forget where this was. I want to say this is in the United States. And just mind-blowing. If you know, please leave it in the comments. And here a little high-tech boat sporting all kinds of tech that we would typically see on buildings. Really seeming like a small building actually right here on top of this boat. And here one of my favorite pictures of Venice with this still and glassy water and a seemingly abandoned yet high-tech city. And here's another great mud flutter. Not sure where this is. Again, perhaps you know, but this is the case that we see probably in every major city in the world. And every now and then we get a little glimpse. 
Now this is a little segment I'm going to call the Tartarian Brick. I was actually driving to the neighboring town of mine and I decided to stop here and eat a sandwich. This is the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. what they would call oil field country. And naturally I'm always looking for ruins or traces of past civilization. And really this has been going on for a long time. And I used to look for caves and hope to find some Native American artifacts. And today I was looking at these, trying to consider whether or not these may be melted buildings. So I'm looking for signs of any kind of block or brick. And naturally also looking for signs of mud flood or any kind of flood. And here we can see what looks like the forming of rock, what seems, uh, according to the narrative, more lava. And yet again, I'm looking for some kind of signs of civilization. And really just looking like a big mess. Here, these could have been some blocks that have been stacked on each other and just kind of melted and pancaked. But otherwise, uh, not very excited uh, up to this point, but very fascinating. I did have a very nice time. Me and the dog had a nice hike. And as always, just very fascinating looking at this remains of something. Now, a lot of people have questioned whether these rocks are land masses, you know, results of volcanism obviously being the mainstream narrative and then we came across the tree theory that these might be giant massive trees or just vegetation or plant life or even fungi that has petrified and then we have Roger at Mud Fossil University and he looks at these giant masses and will hypothesize that they may be body parts either of giants or dragons and oftentimes I do see such things such examples that would lend to being some sort of a creature but in this case and at this point really not coming up with any conclusions a lot of red you know the red could be the iron from blood if we were considering rogers theories and what could this pile be and seeming as if uh, a lot of rock has collected and perhaps the original matter was underneath and got covered with a mud flood and this does look like mud flood i mean here we see clay and really this was just pure clay that had just you know for clay to get up here and just pack this what seemed hollow as i tapped on it with my hand really does lend to a mud flooding and this is i think what what a true mud flood would look like it would have all kinds of bits of different rock in it and really it was as hard as concrete almost like a granite and perhaps this is how the ancients discovered how to make concrete it was this simple byproduct and this uh, leftover solidification from the mud flood and this was just fascinating just a, a wall of it here completely lodged in and this not seeming like an ancient building or a dead creature. Now again, either of these could be underneath all of this, but this has definitely been buried and not with some volcanic ash, but mud. And here's a little lizard. But as of this point, in my hike and exploration really coming up with very little conclusions and here I continued for a little bit 
just to the edge of this rock outcropping and thus far this was the most interesting thing I found. You'll see a pile of rocks over here on the right and they really did seem like potentially the remain of some kind of a structure possibly very possibly tilted on its side not really sure and not very exciting so now I came down back to the truck and somewhat disheartened only as far as the exploration was concerned again it was a wonderful time the sandwich was nice as well as the hike but just kind of looking at this landscape and reflecting and I was thinking to myself you know if only I could find just something just some kind of clue or idea that there was some civilization here and then I looked down on the ground and saw what looked like a brick and here it is I threw it in the back of my truck at this point but for the sake of the video I thought I would try to stick it back in the square earth there just so you could see and this baby I mean I have like bricks all over the place especially behind my coffee shop and this was just a perfect brick size I mean this looked like a brick had a brick color but it looks like it had been blasted just blasted and and I'll show a little close-up of it and you can see the really just looking like it, it had gone through hell and that it was a brick at one point and now it's just very strange and absolutely amazing that at the very moment that I you know was thinking to myself I wish I could find something and here was something in the ground uh, perhaps somewhat protected and some of the material that may have washed away in this flood before everything eventually was completely covered and completely buried and so really fascinating this brick and maybe I'll do another little video showing it in more detail But I think that's it for today. This video has gone a lot longer than I wished. But thank you for joining me. And do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.